Revelation chapter 10, verse 7. If you have your Bible, go ahead and get that out. We're going to be breaking this uh, verse down by phrases. If you have your Bible, it'll be easier for you to keep up. Revelation chapter 10, verse 7 reads, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he has declared to his servants the prophets. The phrase, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, refers to Revelation 11:15, and is the seventh trumpet judgment and as well the third woe. This will signal, as we shall see, the beginning of the last half of the great tribulation, which will be horrible beyond compare, and for two reasons. Number one, the judgments of God, as it regards the vials, will be worse than ever. Number two, Satan will now be cast down to earth, and it will empower the Antichrist as it regards his bid for world dominion. He will then turn on Israel as well. In fact, were it not for the second coming, Israel would be totally and completely destroyed. For that will be the ambition of the Antichrist, but he will not succeed as we shall see. The phrase, when he shall begin to sound the mystery of God, should be finished. So we started out, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, refers to the fact that Satan is now about to be cast out of heaven, where he will not again be allowed entrance. He will be cast down to this earth, where he will meet his doom, Revelation 12 and 12. All of this will take place under the seventh trumpet judgment. At least this will be the beginning stage. The great mystery of God is the long delay of our Lord in taking the kingdom unto himself and establishing righteousness in the earth. For approximately 6,000 years, sin has run riot on this earth. It has touched every corner of civilization darkened every heart and filled the earth with graves. There is no family on earth who hasn't seen its results and suffered the bitterness of its bile. There is no physical body that doesn't decay and grow old, no life that doesn't end in death, and no heart that hasn't ultimately broken. In fact, the pages of history from the time of the first murder until the present hour, are written in blood, tears, and death. So why has God delayed so long, knowing that he is all-powerful, knowing that he is all-knowing? Why has he endured this evil for so long? That is the most uh, inexplicable mystery of which the mind could dream. For these thousands of years, God has allowed Satan continue, to continue. He has allowed him to steal, kill, and to destroy. Does God know all of this? We know that he does. Is he indifferent to this? We know that he is not indifferent. Is he not able to cope with it? We know that he is able so we're left with a mystery, the mystery of God. Most likely this mystery has brought more stumbling to the faith of God's people than any other experience of life. The infidel, the atheist, the unbeliever uh, laugh and mock at us, and God lets them mock and laugh most of the time without interfering. Little children die of diseases with other millions starving to death because of lack of food, with uncounted millions living oppressed, despair, and it seems that God just looks upon the scene and does nothing. As we look beyond this veil of tears, we come back to the never-changing word of Almighty God. 
And what does he tell us? He tells us that it has already been prophesied and predicted that an angel, in fact, a herald angel, with trumpet in hand, and by the decree of the Lord God Almighty, on a particular day, at a given hour, actually at a scheduled moment, shall sound that trumpet, and it will announce that the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. The following should the following we should understand. Not only was this universe created by Christ, but as well it was created for Christ. According to the word of God, the history of this world ultimately moves to that time when God's people shall reign with their Lord in the earth. The phrase, as he has declared to his servants, the prophets. So we started out. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin the sound, the mystery of God should be finished. As he has declared to his servants, the prophets, proclaims the first word given immediately after the fall. When God through the serpent told Satan that the seed of the woman who is the Lord Jesus Christ would bruise his head, which refers to what Christ would do at the cross, Genesis 3 and 15. Time and again the Lord gave this message to the prophets that Satan would ultimately be defeated but never did give the time. Consequently, when reading the prophets, we might read of sorrow and heartache, of battle and blood and conflict and crisis, but the prophet always saw the glorious day of the dawning, this grand time that is coming. But this final trump is not now, not yet, it is close, but the time has not yet quite arrived. We will live in the day of tears and heartache and strife and conflict. And actually the Lord tells us that his delay is to be accepted by us now as part of the mystery of God. He really doesn't owe us an, an, an he really doesn't owe us an explanation only that we must expect this delay. When the Lord closed his great sermon given in Matthew chapter 24, he closed it with a parable concerning this delay. The parable is about a servant who said in his evil heart, My Lord delays his coming. He is not going to come. We're not going to see him. Again in verse 36, that same chapter he says, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Then in the parable of the ten virgin, it tells us that they all slumbered and slept. The delay was long, Matthew chapter 25. Then again in Luke 19, 11, he spoke this parable unto them because they thought, that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. The Holy Spirit through Peter mentions it, it, it mentions it again. There shall come in the last days scoffers, saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Second Peter 3 and 3. So we are warned uh, uh, plenty. However, we are also told that the delay will not last forever and the victory will come. Because of that, we must never be persuaded that the battle belongs to our enemy. The victory belongs to us. Every true preacher of the gospel 
is an echo of that ultimate and final victory. God's Spirit in triumph marches before us, always leading to ultimate victory, which has all been made possible by the cross. And that concludes Revelation chapter 10, verse 7.